Today's tutorial is how to do a whip stitch. There are quite a few uses for a whip stitch and there are also quite a few similar and yet different techniques. So I'm going to do half of this stitch, a certain technique. I'm gonna do the other half, the second technique, and then I will use this stitch um, on the side here to show you a third whip stitch technique. To start off, make sure you have all of your equipment, your sewing practice card, clippers, a needle threaded with a double strand of black thread for this activity, and here's your spool of black thread that you will need to get your thread from. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside because I've already threaded my needle and knotted it, so I'm ready to go. Like I said, we're going to start with this first half here. You can see I drew a line down the center of my stitches. This technique would be similar to if I was trying to sew this black fabric to this orange fabric around this curved edge. This would be the black fabric. This would be the orange fabric. So imagine two layers um, sitting on top of each other. Maybe you are sewing a patch onto some fabric, this would be the same technique you could use. You're going to start by poking all of your holes, both on the top, the bottom, and the side rows. Now that I have all of my dots poked through, I'm going to start with my beginning knot. So right here at the end, I'm going to use these two stitches. Um, the one thing you need to always do is hide your knot when you're tying them. So if we are imagining that this is one piece of fabric and this is one piece of fabric on the other side. This is the top. So I wanna make sure that before I lay this second piece of fabric down, I go ahead and start my stitch by just going down and up through the fabric like that. And then I would go through the loop before pulling it tight as we've done before, up and down and through the loop. In this case, we went down and up because we actually want to hide this knot between the bottom layer of fabric and the top layer of fabric. So what this would look like right now is me adding my second piece of fabric on top here. And now I am have a knot and I'm ready to stitch. this point I'm going to flip it around because I want my stitch, my knot's hidden, I want my stitch to go down and then up through the second layer of fabric. And then I'm going to swing it over, down, and up. So this is why it's called the whip stitch because you take a stitch, whip it around down and up. So you can see that the stitches I'm creating at this point are at an angle. This is a fun technique for adding some detail down and up. Down and up. down and up. I'm going to continue this on to about halfway through my card. Uh, that way I can show you the second technique as well. All right, this will be my last stitch. I'm about halfway through my card. So I'm once again going to go 
down and up in one smooth stitch and whip it around. However, instead of going down and up at a straight angle right now, I want my stitches to be straight. So if I want to change my stitches from being at an angle to being straight, instead of stitching straight, I need to stitch at an angle. So I'm going to go down and up at an angle. So there you can see my first stitch um, transitioned from the angled stitches to the straight stitches. So I'm going to just go straight over, stitch down and up. When I pull that out, I will have another straight stitch. Stitch down and up at an angle. This one's a little harder to show without getting in the way of the camera, so I apologize. All right, and at this point, you can see I'm starting to get close to running out of thread. I'm gonna do two more stitches, and I'm going to stop and tie a knot, and then get new thread to continue my stitch. There we go. So, remember that in reality, this would have two layers of fabric, one on top of the other. So at this point, since this is all stitched together, I could flip my fabric up and tie my knot right here. And then when I continue, I would hide my new thread knot here, lay it down and continue my stitching. You would never know you quit stitching and start it again. So I can go and do a couple of things. I could either go under this stitch and through the loop or if I'm not comfortable trying to hide my knot on the side like that, I could always do one stitch under the fabric and up and then spin it around and go through the loop. So then at, it would be nice and hidden under the second layer of fabric, under the stitch, flip it around and go through that loop that you created right there. This is a good example of making sure you leave enough at the end to do your knots. Under the stitch, whip it around, and just barely we're gonna squeak it through that loop. Oh, almost got it. Perfect. Pull that tight and that's a nice knot. It'll be hidden under my second layer. I can go ahead and clip that and get a new length of thread. At this point, you'd go ahead and re-thread your needle, pull that through match your ends so we're getting these two ends real close here and we're going to put them together as if they were one thread wrap them around your finger take the loop off tail back to front through the loop and there you have your knot always slide it close to the end of your thread and trim any excess. At this point, I'm ready to stitch again. So I would hide my knot in the same spot. Where I ended, I could just go up and down, or excuse me, down and up, 
pull it almost tight, separate your threads, and go through that loop. And when you pull it tight, it is once again hidden under this flap of fabric right there. If you ever have a tail, just tuck it under and bam, it would be hidden. And then you can continue your stitches. So remember we want our straight stitches, so we have to go down and up at an angle. Down, up at an angle. And at this point, I can go ahead and go back to coming right out where I was on my last stitch because once again, this would be under my fabric right here. So I could just lift up the flap and be tying the knot. So right here, I can go back to the last spot under the stitch and through the loop. It's very important to keep all of these knots on the same side. So if this is going to be my underside, all of my knots have to be on this side. I can't have a knot here and a knot here and a here and here. They all have to be along the same side. Otherwise they would not be hidden. So that is something I will be looking for during grading. Okay, under the stitch, through that loop, Pull it tight, and one last time under the stitch and through the loop, making sure. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and just clip off that tiny little loop that got caught there, and we're done. At this point, I have enough thread to make it through my third and final stitch demonstration. So I'm gonna go ahead and match the ends of my thread. Loop them around my fingers, pull the loop off, tuck the tail back to front through the loop, grab it and pull it tight right at the end. Trim any excess and I'm ready for technique number three. So in this scenario, you would be sewing along the edge of two layers of fabric. So maybe I am finishing up my bookmark and I want to sew it on the outside edge here. Um, so you have to remember that there are two layers of fabric here. So if I was going to hide my knot in this situation, I don't want it to show on the front or on the back because both of them are going to be visible in my finished product. I actually want to hide it in between. So either on this side or on this side is where I will put my knot. So I can go ahead and go up. And with this whip stitch, you would be whipping around, boom, coming back in and through your loop. So up and down is actually your up and around and through the loop. When you pull that snug, you would tuck it towards the inside of your project, just like that. So up and around and through the loop. And then every single time you take a stitch, you are going to sew up, pull it snug, whip it around. Sew up, pull it snug whip it around, up, pull, whip it around.
This is a very quick stitch because you're only taking one stitch for every up and down. Because you're doing the down stitch and pulling it tight as you do the up stitch as well. And at this point, you could flip it around. So this was your last whip it around. And instead of going back up through, you're gonna go under the stitch. I like to do this one a couple of times for the under the stitch, just to kind of get it tightened around there and through the loop. When you pull this tight, it's good to pull it down towards this opposite side of the edge so you're not tying your knot where it's going to be visible under the stitch and through the loop pull it tight one last time under the stitch and through the loop Boom. at this point you can trim your thread and when you flip it over you'd have this nice smooth stitch around along your edge. Straight stitch, back stitch, whip stitch techniques.